Hello everyone, now our today's topic is that the numerical based on practical examples. Okay. In last class we have discussed theoretical importance of sampling distribution and the significance testing and how to do significance testing, the techniques t test, f test and also we have discussed the confidence intervals. Okay. And today we will try to see with practical examples the how to calculate and how to actually get some conclusion, how do we, how do we reach to some conclusion with some practical examples. And here what we have done here the examples are based on the textile industry okay. data we have taken from textile industry first is that how to calculate standard deviation okay, if we know the standard error. So, st the standard error the problem could be like this for a set of 25 inputs the standard error is given 12.40. Okay. Then what will be the value of standard deviation? So, we want to know the standard deviation of population and if we know the value of this standard of error. Okay. So, it is very simple we know the formula of standard of error, standard error of mean is the standard deviation of population divided by under root n, <coughs> where n is the number of input, number of data. So, here if we see the number of data is 25 and standard error is given 12.4. So, 12.4 multiplied by under root n that is 25 it comes out to be 62. So, 62 is the standard deviation of population that is a and if we want to know variance, variance is this value. So, that way we can calculate if we know the standard deviation of population we can calculate the standard error of mean or we or vice versa. Okay. And also if we know the standard error of mean suppose standard error of mean is given and standard deviation of population is given from there we can calculate the n value also. So, using this formula we can calculate so one if two are given we can calculate one it is very simple one. Now, try to understand try to go uh, see the uh, next numerical. Next is that the problem is that it is a number of test it is very important particularly in industry also and most important is that it is the in research. In research studies we must know how many data we have to take to get certain confidence with a certain data of confidence with certain confidence limit we can tell okay, this data this result is perfect. Okay. So, to determine the number of test, so in any test the number of individuals to be tested will depend on, so how many test we have to do, we may test suppose for any, any data, any experiment we may test say 4 sample, we may take 10, we may take 50. So, it cannot be arbitrary, okay. we should know that how many test we have to perform. So, it depends upon the 
variability of the material. Suppose, whatever experiment I am doing, whatever product we are developing, we are producing, if it is highly variable, variability is very high, then we have to take large number of data in the sample. We will see in the calculation, okay. by calculation, by numericals we will see this experiment, this value, this conclusion we will try to uh, prove. So, the variability of the material if it is less, suppose uh, the uh, uh, material we are uh, uh, producing which is variability is very less, in that case the number of sample required will be very low. Let us take example of polyester filament say monofilament and stapelion cotton stapelion. Now, now we would like to know the number of data required to calculate the, the u percent or diameter variation. So, as the cottonian has is highly variable in nature. So, to have certain confidence in the data, we have to test large number of data. Okay, we have to test large number of sample. On the other hand, polyester filament it is coming out say mono, monofilament it is coming out from the spinneret, single spinneret and variability is not there. In that case obviously, we may not need large number of data and with a certain confidence we can tell that this data result is it is actually valid. So, why? Because the due to the less variability we can because here standard deviation is less in case of polyester monofilament. So, then next is that the accuracy required from the measurement. Now, if we know if we say okay, I do not need that much accuracy in my data. Okay, it is accuracy is not that important, okay, that is okay, it will work. I want I need only some idea. In that case, number of sample will be less. And if we need highly accurate data, very accurate data, very with the high confidence level, level, in that case we need large number of data. So, this large number of smaller number of is okay but what is that value. So, we will now see how to calculate how to actually specify the number of test, okay. how to determine the number of test based on known target of accuracy or known variability level. Okay. If we know the variability or if we have the targeted accuracy error targeted error value, then we can calculate the number of test required. For many standard test, the coefficient of variation is known approximately, so that the number of test necessary to achieve the given confidence limit and error that can be calculated. So, most of the cases our standard deviation or coefficient of variation is known and we, we our targeted error value is given and then for a certain confidence limit we can calculate the number of test. So, we must know the variability and we must have the targeted error level, then we can calculate the number of test with a certain confidence level. So, we, we can have 95 percent confidence level or we can have 99 percent confidence level. Okay. Now, let us take example. So, calculation of number of test required. Okay. First problem is that a yarn has mean strength 
of 10 gram per tex so that is the mean strength with a standard deviation of 1 gram per tex this is given what will be the number of test which must be carried out so that at 95 percent confidence level the maximum error in the estimated mean is 1.9 percent. That means, what does it mean? The target is that I can allow maximum error percent in my data 1.96 percent that is the allowable data. So, beyond that I do not I cannot allow 2 percent data whatever reading I am taking. So, I can allow only 1.96 percent maximum error and maximum error of 1.96 percent of what? 1.96 percent of 10 gram per tex 10 data that is mean value. So, the mean can vary 1.96 percent plus side or 1.96 percent minus side within that range it is we it is allowed and standard deviation is known and I have to calculate at 95 percent confidence limit. Okay. Now, what are the given data? Mean strength is given 10 gram per tex. Okay. Next what is given? Mean deviation is given standard deviation is given it is 1 gram per tex is standard deviation. Now, maximum error it is given in percent it is not in value. So, that in that case we have to convert it to in terms of value. So, 1.96 percent of 10 what is that? It is a 0.196 that is a 0 0.196 0 0.196 is the maximum limit that is allowable. What is that limit? 0.196 that limit is that it is a standard it is a t value multiplied by standard error. This t value that we have seen earlier that limit the maximum limit is d value d the d we have seen it is a t multiplied by standard error that is the maximum limit of that a it can be it can go into plus side and minus side. And this why this t value is 1.96 because we have large number of data we can which we can consider as infinite and from the t table at 95 percent confidence level if we see the t table and this t table will give us the value this is the 95 percent confidence level and here if I little bit enlarge at infinite level the large sample infinite level means which is large sample it represents it is a 1.96. This 1.96 is the t value and here this t value is taken here. So, that that limit means the maximum limit allowable is equal to 1.96 from the t value we have t table we have got and multiplied by standard error and what is the limit of mean that limit of mean that we have calculated already this limit of mean is the it is a maximum error allowable and maximum error allowable what we have seen earlier it is a 0 0.196 that is 1.96 percent of 10. So, 0 0.196 is the maximum error multiplied by standard equal to standard division multiplied by 1.96 okay. and so we get the we can calculate the standard error of mean from here we calculate the standard error of mean what is this value standard error it is a 1 by 10 so point 0.1. So, standard error we have calculated now our target is to calculate the the number of sample tested. So, what we have done? We have calculated the standard error okay. knowing the 
limit error ok maximum error from that and 1.96 the data came from the confidence level ok. So, the formula says that standard error of mean equal to standard deviation of population by under root n, n is the number of sample and n is the number of sample and standard deviation is given already, it is a population standard deviation is given 1 gram per text. So, from there we can calculate the value of n. So, 1 by 10 which is standard error, this is the standard error. So, standard error 1 by 10 ok equal to 1, what is 1? This 1 is the standard deviation ok and divided by under root n, this is the number of sample which we want to calculate ok. So, under root n equal to 10 and n will be equal to 100 ok. So, this is the answer. So, if we take now the conclusion is if we take 100 test, 100 reading, 100 sample ok and in that case we can tell with 95 percent confidence that the test result whatever test result is there sample result the error will be maximum error will be 1.96 percent. So, the significance of this test is that we can tell at certain uh, confidence. Now, suppose we want to shift our confidence, we want to shift our confidence to 99 percent. Now, what will happen to the number of test? In that case, if we shift the confidence, if we want to have more confidence, in that case our number of test has to be more. Now, let us see with the same example, just by changing the confidence level, let us try to see the calculate the number of samples. Now, here the problem is exactly same. Yarn has mean strength 10 gram per text with a standard deviation of 1 gram per text. What will be the number of tests which must be conducted so that 99 percent at 99 percent confidence level maximum error in the estimated mean is 1.96 percent. Earlier also it was there, but uh, the error was 1.96 percent, but if we take 100 reading that means, out of 100 time 5 time I will be wrong, 5 time there will be the data may cross these things, but if we try to know at 99 percent confidence level that means, we want to miss only 1 percent but 99 percent time I will be correct. So, let us see what will be the number of tests required. The same way it will go mean strength, standard deviation, maximum error in the estimated mean strength that is 1.96 percent that is maximum error and maximum error value is exactly same. And here only thing is that it is the it is changed to 99 percent. So, with 99 percent what is changing here? Here the t value has got changed, earlier it was 1.96 at 99 percent confidence level with say large number of data. Let us see with the with large number of data it has become at 99 percent confidence level it has become 2.576 it is approximately we can consider it is a 2.58. So, as it has become 2.58 that means, everything will get changed. So, then in that case so this limit is same 
but the as it has become 2.58, so standard error will get changed. So, this is the maximum error, maximum error is 0.196, it has become so standard error earlier was 0.1, now it has become 0 0.076 because of the fact it is it has be earlier it was 1.96, now it has become 2.58. So, standard error is changed and in the same way we can calculate the number of sample. So, standard error 0 0.076 equal to 1, 1 has come from this is the 1 standard deviation okay. and this is the standard error okay. and from there we can calculate the number under root n equal to 13.16 and n has become 173. So, what does it mean here? Earlier if we test uh, based on 100 data, 100 reading, then my confidence is 95 percent. That means, out of 100 data, 5 will definitely go above that. But if we want more higher confidence, if we need higher confidence in that case we have to go for the large number of data that is 1.7173. So, if we want to have more and more confidence higher confidence, so in that case some number of sample will be more. Now, this is one way of looking at suppose we will we will go back to the earlier problem once again 95 percent confidence level. Okay. In that case, now I am I am not going to allow 1.96 percent error that is too much for me. For our experiment, this experiment needs very close close limit okay. that is a wide limit. In that now next example is that the same 95 percent is there, but here what we have done I am not allowing 1.96 percent of the error okay. that is not it is not allowed, it is allowed only 1.25 percent that is my that that is the error my experiment will allow that because the number of amount of threat or amount of accuracy required or depending on the type of test okay. in that case suppose we want to test some material which the actual result will may give us the light threat like bullet proof vest the penetration efficiency we want. In that case the alloy the errors must be very very small. Okay. So, the in that case so we have so if we reduce the number of error then to have certain confidence what will be the number of data re test required. Okay. So, from 1.96 we have reduced it to 1.25. Okay. Now, let us see the impact. So, mean strength is exactly same. Now, standard deviation is same. Maximum error has got changed 1.25. Now, we will calculate the maximum error it has become 0 0.125 earlier it was 0 0.196. Now, confidence level is same that is why it has become it has re, it remains at 1.96 okay. and standard of error from there we can calculate the standard error. So, standard error will be 0 0.1 1 to 5 by 1.96. So, standard error has become 0 0.064, this is the standard error. Okay. And if we know the standard error and our standard deviation is known, so we can calculate the number of sample. So, this is the standard error and standard deviation is given. And we can calculate the number of sample 
and number of samples become very high 246. So, that as our requirement is becoming stringent. So, we have to select we have to take large number of sample. Okay. So, we have seen here the number of sample depends on two parameters one is that variability of sample or another level of confidence we require and the range error allowable what is the error allowed that is that we have discussed. Now, come to the next type of numerical this is value. Now, here calculation of number of test required with lower allowed error. Okay. So, differ at different number of allowed error here the thing is that we do not know the standard deviation in earlier problem the standard deviation was given here the one uh, little bit complexity is there here standard deviation is not given. So, we have to first calculate the standard deviation now the numerical is at 99 percent confidence range of the mean yarn strength based on 64 test sample is plus minus 8. Only we know the confidence range, okay. we do not know the even mean value. What will be the number of test samples required to obtain 99 percent confidence range of plus minus 4 of the yarn strength. So, confidence limit is same. So, 99 percent confidence limit is same. Only thing is the range has changed. So, initially 64 tests were conducted and confidence range was plus minus 8. Now, we have reduced the confidence range okay. that is the it has become plus minus 4. What we have done here the error has been reduced we, we try to reduce the error limit. So, standard deviation is not known here. So, for 99 percent confidence range the limit of mean what is that because as it is 99 percent as we have seen earlier it will be t value is 2.58 multiplied by standard error. So, what is that limit here plus minus 8 equal to 2.58 multiplied by standard error okay. and standard error will be plus minus 8 divided by plus minus 2.58 this is the value. So, standard error is 8 by 2.58 okay. this is the standard error of mean. So, standard error equal to standard deviation of population by under root n. So, n is the number of sample what is here the what is n value here it is a 64. So, n value is given 64. So, standard error is known n is given. So, from there so 8 by 2.58 is the standard error 64 is given from there we can calculate the sigma that is standard deviation of the sample it is a standard deviation of population it is a 24.8. So, now this standard deviation we will use in the next segment second part for limit of plus minus 4. So, this is plus minus 4 again it is it has large sample 2.58. So, from there standard error we have calculated. So, this is the 1.5 is the standard error. So, now we know the standard error and we know the mean uh, st population standard deviation. Standard error is known for this uh, plus minus 4 error and standard deviation of population is known. So, from there we can calculate the n value. 
this is the number of sample should be test taken to have the limit of plus minus 4 for same population. That means, from plus minus 8 error where we required only 64 test samples, when we are changing it to plus minus 4, the sample required number of sample required 256. That means, if we take 256 sample, so with that 99 percent confidence level, confidence level, we can tell that the error will be maximum plus minus 8. Okay. Now, next problem is that we have uh, this is now the significance test. Till now, what we have done, we have we tried to calculate the number of test required. Now, this is the significance test, which is single mean with a small sample. So, small sample typically we assume at less than 30 number of sample is there, if it is there it is a small sample. Now, the problem is that the 24 ring bobbins are tested, we have tested 24 ring bobbins for count and the mean count is found to be 52.4 okay. and the standard deviation of the sample we have got 4.1 that is the standard deviation and the nominal count of the uh, yarn which is uh, supposed to be 50. So, that is targeted count is 50, but the when sample is taken 24 ring bobbins are taken and we have got the count of 52.4 and with the standard deviation of 4.1 that is the sample standard deviation. Here population standard deviation is not known. So, in that case specific case we can assume the population uh, sample standard deviation as population standard deviation because we do not have any data. Now, we have to tell that whether the yarn is too fine that means, this is 50s count and it is a 52.4 count. The question is that is the yarn is fine, it is too fine. Should we take precaution, should we take any action, should we make it little bit coarser by changing the draft. So, all this question, so suddenly changing draft it is not that easy. Suppose we have tested 24 ring bobbin, we have got 52.4 suddenly based on that okay, it is, this is coming finer 50 count is targeted 52.4 count is, uh, is, uh, is coming. So, before we take any action we cannot stop the machine, we cannot stop halt everything. So, we that takes time that is expensive one before that we have to quickly do the significance test. Significance test means if we do if we assume if we uh, see that or if we can conclude that this difference is not significant, then we will let the process go and this it will not have any significant impact on any other properties. But if this difference is actually significant, then we have to stop, we have to take precaution. Okay. That is the basic reason of the significance test. Okay. So, now, we have to decide whether the act yarn is actually finer or not. Okay. Now, the solution is that what are the given data? The number of sample is 24 okay. and mean of sample is 52.4 that is the mean. Standard deviation is 4.1 that is the standard deviation and nominal count is 50 that is the targeted count 50 that is our that has to be produced, but when we have tested sample sample has come 52.4. Now, how to do it here we have to do 
T test. So, we have to calculate the T and we know the T uh, how to calculate the T. To calculate the T, we have to first calculate the standard error of the mean. So, standard error of mean of bobbin we have to how to calculate the same formula standard deviation by under root n. Okay. So, here standard deviation is known and number of bobbin is 24 sample. So, standard error is calculated 0.837. Okay. Now, if we calculate now once we calculate standard error then we can calculate the t value what is t value from earlier uh, curves we have uh, diagram we have we see we have seen that t is its modulus of nominal mean minus sample mean by standard error okay so let us calculate the t value this is the t value 2.867 okay so this is so 50 minus 52.4 by standard error 2.4 by the standard error we have calculated point in last slide we have calculated point 0.836 was the 7. So, by point 0.837. So, 2.867 is the T value. Now, this T value we have to compare with the table t value for a particular degree of freedom that is z value degree of freedom which is nothing but n minus 1 number of sample. So, we have 24 sample. So, degree of freedom has become 23. So, for that particular t value um, particular degree of freedom from the table we can calculate we can get the T value. So, and then compare this T value obtained here 2 H in the step 2 with the 5 percent and 1 percent value of T for degree of freedom of 23. Okay. So, at 5 percent level the value of T is 2.069 and at 1 percent level value of t is 2.807. This is for the, the degree of freedom of 23. Let us see from the table at 5 percent level we will see that degree of freedom is 23. At 5 percent level this is the 95 percent. So, 95 percent level it is a 2.069. Okay, and it is a 2.808. So, this with these two values we can compare the results okay. 2.069 and 2.807 these are taken from the table okay. and our calculated value is what we have achieved this 2.867. Now, this 2.867 when we compare with this table value it is higher than the both this value higher than 1 percent level that means what our conclusion is that that 2 point as 2.867 is more than 2 point at 1 percent level 1 percent level it is always higher than the 5 percent level it is greater than 2.807 so we conclude that the ring frame ring bobbin is spinning so ring frame is spinning too fine count okay because the difference between the sample mean and nominal mean is significant at 1% level so that real difference exists so if it is there then what action we have to take we have to stop the machine we have to stop the production we have to do the correction we have to all the corrective action we have to take okay now with the same data same problem we have changed here what we have changed that the 24 ring bobbins are there same ring bobbins now are tested for count and the mean is found to be 
8, earlier it was higher. Now, we have tested the count has become closer to the nominal value. Earlier if we see earlier what it was 52.4, okay. now it has become 51.8. Okay. Now, we have to test okay, whether the yarn is still fine or not. Okay. Same way we will go number of sample is the sample mean is 51.8, standard deviation is 4.1, it is given nominal count is same, same step 1 and standard uh, error is same because the stand number of sample and the standard deviation was same. Only difference is that here the sample mean and sample mean has become 51.8. So, the T value has become 2.15, 2.15 and degree of freedom is 23 and for 2.15 23. So, it was the at 5 percent level it was 2.069 and at 1 percent level it has it is 2.807. So, our calculated value is 2.15. So, what does it mean? That is that means this value is lying in between 5 percent level and 1 percent level. That means, although there is variation, okay, but we cannot confidently tell that is a real variation. Okay. So, this, con, uh, this 2.807 is more than 2.1.15. So, this is in between. The conclusion is that although there is some evidence of a difference in variability, but in is only significant at 5 percent level. It is only significant at 5 percent. So, that depends on us how to tackle these things. Okay. Now, next is that significant test between means of two large sample. Now, earlier till now what we have done? We have done significance test based on the, the nominal value. So, nominal value is known our target suppose our ring frame is targeting as a, it is a 50 count is targeted. So, we have taken sample out of that and we have done test on this, but the no, it the this type of experiment is it is uh, very much required in the in uh, research, where we have two samples two separate both the samples are there. In that case suppose we have selected one sample sample of yarn A, another sample we have taken sample of yarn B. Now, we would like to compare these two samples. When we try to compare the two individual sample for their significance, then we have to test, we have to use some different methods. Now, let us see this example, from this example it will be very clear. Now, two yarns each of 40 5 any count, okay. 45 any count is uh, known, where these were tested for least strength. 20 tests were made on each yarn and the following results were obtained. So, yarn A 20 test, yarn B 20 test, mean strength here is 60, 60 pound okay. and here it is 70 mean strength and standard deviation here is a sigma 1 is 6.5 and here sigma 2 is 7.8. Now, what we, we were interested in whether this 60 and 70, whether the yarn B is significantly stronger than yarn A or yarn A is significantly weaker than yarn B that we have to test. So, do you right away reject the yarn A? So, that we have to test. Okay. Suppose we are, we have two sample two uh, samples from two buyer, uh, two supplier yarn A and yarn B. We have to select one of them. Okay, 
Now, and suppose this yarn A is giving in little bit cheaper price yarn A. Now, then suppose this the prices are same, then we will definitely go by this yarn B. But yarn A when they are offering us some discount, say so, yeah, then we have to take decision. But at the same time, it is said that we cannot compromise our strength. Okay. Now, what we have to do? We have to the, uh, the option with us that before taking finalization, before rejection, we can take one chance because we cannot uh, we cannot compromise with the strength. So, we can reject, but before rejection we will do some test significance test. Now, if the significance test says this difference is significant, then we will reject it. If it is insignificant, then we may decide to take this one. Okay. Now, what we do? Standard error of mean of yarn A. So, like earlier uh, processes, we will calculate the standard error of yarn A. So, A C 1 same way 66.5 by under root 2, this is the standard error of 1 A. Similarly, for yarn B standard error 2 is equal to 1.75. Okay. Now, what are we doing here? We are trying to calculate the significance of the difference of mean. So, in that case we have to calculate the standard error of difference of mean. So, it is not the standard error of mean because our target is that to test the significant difference of mean. So, the from standard error of 1 and standard error of 2 we can calculate the standard error of the difference between mean which is known as stand A C difference okay. and using a sm simple formula this is the standard formula given. So, from A C 1 and A C 2 what we do we calculate A C difference. Okay. So, what is the formula A C difference is under root A C 1 square plus A C 2 square okay. and A C 1 and A C 2 is known. So, from there we calculate the standard error of difference. Okay. Now, this standard error will be treated as normal standard error as we have done earlier, okay. but here as we have two standard error and we want to calculate the we want to understand the difference, we have to take the decision on the difference in mean that is why we have to calculate the standard error of difference. Okay. A C difference has become 2.265 and this 2.265 is the standard error of difference and then we will use we will treat exactly in the same way. Here only thing difference is that here earlier case we have used the standard error, but here we are using standard error of difference in the same way because here we have two individual means. Okay. Now, T is 60 minus 70 by standard error of difference and we know the standard error of difference is 2.265. So, T value has become 4.415. So, this is the T value and our degree of freedom was that is the large sample. So, for large sample it is a the for 95 and 99 percent it is 1.96 and 2.58 as we have seen earlier also and this is for both the it is a very high okay. t value is body that means what will be our conclusion our conclusion would be the there is a real difference is there since 4.1415 uh, is greater than 2.58 the difference between the mean least strength 
is significant at 1 percent level that is real difference exist. So, in that in this case what um, our uh, um, our decision would be we must reject that one yarn A which is uh, of 60 strength ok. Yarn strength we can yarn A we can reject and we can retain the yarn B ok. So, this is what about the significance difference in mean ok. And next segment ok real difference is there in next segment we will uh, discuss the significant testing of dispersion ok. So, significant testing of dispersion is of uh, basically it is uh, the problem is here the mean difference is there mean difference there is no difference ok. Suppose, uh, the mean earlier till now what we have seen the yarn there is which is weaker or which is stronger which is more variable or so that is the uh, mean value and difference we are uh, uh, we are trying to understand and the if there is any significant difference in mean value then we are taking um, uh, proper action. So, like last problem last numerical what we have seen where the weaker yarn which is uh, that is uh, 60 pound the strength we have rejected straight away ok. Now, the here in the significant uh, uh, test in dispersion what we will discuss here suppose two sample in one sample the variability is high variability is high another is variability is low. So, in that case should we which sample we should we take with higher value variability that means, it is always it is not um, desirable to have higher variability, but if the machine is producing higher variability should we take immediate action or not. So, that all these things we will discuss we will discuss in the next class ok till then thank you.